Lincoln and Krumah deepened his understanding of African history. Imagine a land pulsating with the rhythms of resilience, where the echoes of freedom resound through the streets. In the heart of this vibrant tapestry stands a visionary leader, a beacon of hope for a continent yearning to break free from the shackles of colonialism. Join us on a journey through time as we unveil the captivating story of Dr. Quentin Krumah, pioneer, statesman, and architect of Ghana's independence. Get ready to be inspired as history unfolds before your eyes. Dr. Quayne Kruma stands as a towering figure in the annals of African history, revered as the architect of Ghana's independence and a champion of Pan-Africanism. Born on September 21, 1909, in Krofel, a small village in the Gold Coast present day Ghana, Nkrumah's journey from a humble background to a global statesman is a testament to his resilience vision and unwavering commitment to the liberation and advancement of his people. This narrative chronicles the life, achievements, and enduring legacy of Dr. Quentin Krumah, tracing his path from a young scholar to the founding father of Ghana and a beacon of hope for the African continent. Quentin Krumah was born to Nyanabe and Kofi Ngolnoma, a goldsmith and traditional chief, from an early age. Nkrumah displayed exceptional intelligence and a thirst for knowledge. His parents, recognizing his potential, ensured and received a solid education despite the financial challenges they faced. Nkrumah attended primary school in Hafasini and later pursued his education at Akimoto School, a prestigious institution known for its emphasis on academic excellence and character development. At Akimoto, Nkrumah excelled academically and demonstrated strong leadership qualities. He immersed himself in extracurricular activities, including sports and debating clubs, where his oratory skills began to emerge. Inspired by the teachings of prominent African intellectuals such as Marcus Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois, Nkrumah developed a keen interest in Pan-Africanism and the quest for African unity and self-determination. After completing his studies at Akimoda, Nkrumah embarked on a journey to pursue higher education abroad. 1935, he left the Gold Coast for the United States, where he enrolled at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, the first historically black university in the United States. Lincoln, Nkrumah deepened his understanding of African history, politics, and liberation movements, while also becoming actively involved in student activism and anti-colonial struggles. Nkrumah's years in the United States proved to be transformative. He became increasingly politicized and committed to the cause of African liberation. He joined various Pan-African organizations and befriended leading intellectuals and activists, including George Podmore and C.L.R. James, who would become influential mentors in his life. In 1945, Nkrumah traveled to London to attend the 5th Pan-African Congress where he delivered a powerful speech advocating for the rights and dignity of African people. His passionate advocacy caught the attention of colonial authorities and sparked a wave of enthusiasm among Africans worldwide. Upon his return to the Gold Coast in 1947, Nkrumah emerged as a charismatic leader and galvanized the masses with his message, liberation and self-government. He founded the Convention People's Party CPP in 1949 with the goal of achieving independence through nonviolent means and mobilizing popular support for the cause. Under Nkrumah's leadership, the CPP quickly gained momentum and became the vanguard of the independence movement in the Gold Coast through mass mobilization, strikes, and civil disobedience campaigns. In the Gold Coast, Nkrumah and the CPP challenged the legitimacy of British colonial rule and demanded self-government for the people of Ghana. In 1951, the CPP scored a landslide victory in the general elections, and Nkrumah was elected as the leader of government business, marking a significant milestone on the road to independence. Buoyed by popular support, Nkrumah intensified his efforts to negotiate with the British authorities and accelerate the process of decolonization. On March 6, 1957, Ghana made history as the first sub-Saharan African nation to gain independence from colonial rule. In a momentous ceremony held at the old polo grounds in Accra, Nkrumah declared, at long last, the battle has ended, and thus Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. From now on, there is a new African in the world. 
that new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. And let the band play our national anthem. And from now on, that national anthem is the national anthem of the Gogo to be played on all occasions. With independence achieved, Krumah turned his attention, the daunting task of nation-building and economic development. He articulated a bold vision for Ghana's future. Rooted in socialism, industrialization, and pan-African solidarity, Krumah believed that political independence was meaningless. Without economic empowerment and social justice for all citizens, Nkrumah's government embarked on an ambitious program of infrastructure development, including the construction of roads, schools, hospitals, and hydroelectric dams aimed at modernizing the country and improving the lives of its people. He also implemented sweeping social reforms, including free education and health care, to ensure that every Ghanaian had access to essential services. At the same time, Nkrumah championed the cause of Pan-Africanism and sought to unite African nations in a common struggle against colonialism, imperialism and racial oppression. He hosted the historical African People's Conference in Accra in 1958, which brought together leaders and activists from across the continent, forge a unified vision for Africa's liberation and development. Despite his lofty ideals and achievements, Nkrumah's rule was not without its challenges and controversies. His authorization style of governance and efforts consolidate power, drew criticism from political opponents and civil society groups who accused him of stifling dissent and suppressing political freedoms. Moreover, Nkrumah's ambitious development projects and socialist policies strained Ghana's economy and led to mounting debt and inflation. The country's reliance on foreign aid and loans exposed it to external pressures and manipulation by Western powers who viewed Nkrumah's socialist experiment with suspicion and hostility. In 1966, while Nkrumah was on a state visit to China, his government was overthrown in a military coup orchestrated by dissatisfied elements within the Ghanaian army and supported by foreign interests. Nkrumah, who was in exile at the time, never returned to Ghana and spent his remaining years in Guinea, where he continued to advocate for African unity and liberation until his death in 1972. Despite the tragic end to his presidency, Nkrumah's legacy endures as a symbol of hope and inspiration for generations of Africans. His vision of a united and prosperous Africa, free from colonial domination and exploitation, continues to resonate with people across the continent and beyond. Nkrumah's contributions to the Pan-African movement and the struggle for independence have earned him a revered place in history as one of Africa's greatest leaders. His writings, speeches, and ideas remain influential, serving as a source of inspiration for activists, scholars, and policymakers committed to advancing the cause of African unity and development and development in Ghana. Nkrumah is remembered as the founding father of the nation and a champion of social justice and equality. His legacy is celebrated through monuments, memorials, and national holidays, ensuring that his memory lives on in the hearts and minds of future generations. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe for more.